How's it going, Phone Lab? It's Root Junkie here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to update your containers um, by pulling new images and running the new images in a container that's already been set up for you. So, once again, you can see a whole bunch of stuff I have here in Docker Desktop, and actually, we're gonna um, we're gonna go over here to Portainer because I like it better. So, here's everything right here, all set up. You can see all your containers, what's running, what's happening. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, so how do you update this, especially? How do you update Portainer? Because you can't update from in here. So um, we're going to do it from uh, our terminal or PowerShell. So let's hit this guy right here. And let's just go ahead and do this. So let's do um, Docker PS to list out all of our uh, images. Let's try to get, if I hopefully we can see them all nicely. Well, that's OK. All right, so not, not too bad, right? Not too bad. So if you look down here, you do have one under the name name column, Portainer, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to stop Portainer. So we're going to say Docker stop Portainer. And that's going to stop Portainer. Then we're going to do Docker. Well, actually, let's do it this way. Let's go up arrow. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually remove the image. So um, RM, which is a Linux command for removing something. So Docker RM Portainer, and that's going to remove the Portainer image. Okay. Um, next, you're going to actually pull the, the new image. So we're going to do Docker pull, and we're going to do Portainer slash Portainer um, dash CE colon latest. And hit enter. And this will pull the latest image um, of Portainer, which it looks like our actually image is up to date. If not, it would pull the latest image, but it's okay. So now we're going to come in here, and we're just going to run the initial setup command we ran before, which is actually right here. Copy. And just so you guys can see this, it should be dead. Yep, yeah, see, not working. And no Portainer here, right? I mean, there's Portainer extensions still, but not, not right there. All right, so we're just going to go in back into here, and we're going to paste that guy in, and we're going to hit Enter, and voila, Portainer should be back up and going. Um, let's go in here and check it out. And it should have the exact same data and everything good to go, right? You didn't have to set up a new account. It didn't delete all of that stuff. It just deleted the image, and you pulled the new image. So... That's how you're going to update Portainer, especially if you come down here and you see that the Community Edition, there's an update down here. It might tell you like, hey, there's an update for Portainer. What I just did is the way you update those kind of containers, all right? And you can do that for a lot of cool stuff. Okay, now, the next one is kind of fun as well. So we come back in here and we do um, Docker PS again. You can see that we still have up, um, where is it at here? It's called, yeah, right here, this one, Docker site, right? This Docker site stuff, which if you saw the video on how to use um, build files or Docker files to do Docker build, then you'll understand what that is, okay? So we need to actually shut that down. So to do that, we're going to cd2 docker, cd2 docker site, ls and here's those files right there's docker compose file so to pull new image, images and get this whole thing back up and running um, for the docker site and if you have a docker compose this is how you do it so from the, the the docker compose location right docker sites where docker compose is located what we're going to do is we're going to type in docker compose down okay and what that's going to do is that's going to shut down and remove those containers and networks and everything. Just shut it all back down. It's gone. Wiped it out. Okay. And then you want an update? We're going to do it here. Docker compose. Man, I'm terrible at typing these days. Compose up minus D. Enter. And what should happen is it should pull all the latest images and put it back up pretty much the process okay um, so very very nice very very simple and we're back and running 
So if we want to verify that, we can come over here to localhost colon, what was it, 8800? Zero, zero? Yeah, I think so. And if it is correct, our site should be up and functional here um, on this port number. And there it is. We've got the site functional. So we're good to go. All right, the next one, and, and the one that I think is the most easy and I love using all the time, this is how I do it, and this is one of the reasons I like Portainer so much, is right here. So if we come into, let's say, IT Tools, and we want to update it. This is the process. This is way simpler, no commands, simple, easy. We stop the container. We go over here to recreate. We say repull the image, and we hit the red button that says recreate. And what's going to happen is it's going to pull whatever it needs to pull. It's going to rerun it. It's going to restart it. And here's IT Tools. Now, you saw this little link over here before. And normally if you click on it, it should bring you to the right location. But it, this is all 0.0.0.0. We're going to fix that right now. So let's close this. We're going to come down here to Environments right here. And we have one called Local. Yours could be different if you named it differently, but ours is Local. And you're going to need to write, put in right here your IP of the device that has Docker running on it. So mine is, right? So that's the IP of the computer that we're running on right here. So if you put that in and you hit update environment, and we go back into our containers, what you're going to see is when you click the link now for IT tools, boom, IT tools works. Right? It's basically putting in the IP, which is the same thing as putting in local host. Does the same thing. But it makes the link work right here. So now all these links, if you want to go to any of these things, we can easily just click the link, right? Do the sign in. Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. I don't know if I remember this sign in. Let's see. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, cool. Sure, why not? So there's there's uptime Kuma. And let's go ahead. I, I just can't handle seeing it like this. It just hurts my eyeballs. Appearance, dark mode. Oh, much better, much better. All right, so very, very cool, very, very sweet. And you can see we have it all functional. Um, I just wanted to show you that, how to fix those link issues um, in case it's a problem for you. Also, here you go, another container, right? So you've seen all this now at this point. Um, very, very cool, lots of stuff running. Um, easy to use, right? But yes, this is Portainer. The other thing let's talk about in Portainer while I've got you on here um, is going to be these templates. So one, you can save custom templates. So if you have a Docker Compose file, um, if we come in here to my Docker stuff and we go to Docker, right? Docker Compose, Edit. You could go ahead and copy this guy, copy. And then we could go back into here, Create. Um, title, um, what did I copy? YouTube. So YouTube dash DL description, YouTube uh, downloader, right? Um, sure, sure, that's fine. Click down here, go paste, shabam, right? Access controls, blah, blah, blah. Upload me here, okay. Website or use editor. Okay, so everything here looks pretty good. So let's just go ahead and hit uh, create custom template. So now you have this template sitting here. And anytime you come in here and you want to run that template, you can just click on it, say deploy stack, wham, bam, you've got that container running. It's pretty sick. But also, there's a lot of containers in here pre created. So, same thing, let's say you want to have a file browser, right? Um, let's just call it uh, file browser. Okay, deploy. All right, it's because I have a space, it won't let me do that. All right, let's try that. File browser, deploy. There we go. So it's starting file browser. You can see it has a port number. Our link should work now. Let's see what happens. Voila, file browser. <laughs> right? Look, look how easy that is. That, that's that simple um, to spin up a new container. Uh, I'd have to read the documentation to get the default passwords. Let, let me see if I, can, if I can guess. It might work. No. Yeah, so I don't have them. So I'd have to get that and figure that out. But still, 
it's really, really sweet to be able to just spin up another container really, really, really fast um, right in here. Or maybe you want to have WordPress spun up. You know what I mean? There, name it, give it a, root, a database password, boom, deploy, bam, you got a WordPress site. Yeah, it's very, very, very powerful. So um, it's very nice. I think the, the interface is much better. Um, the settings and all that, I definitely love it. So lastly, let's just go back into containers. And uh, I'm going to get rid of this file browser one. So we're going to say stop. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to say remove. Yep, remove all volumes, remove. And voila, you've deleted all that stuff right off of uh, your uh, portainer instance and Docker. So one last thing you can do is you can come in here to add container and you can actually do everything in creating a container right here so you can put in a name you can put it in the image the image name so this is just the name you pick an image name which is required right and then you can come in here and start doing all kinds of configuration stuff so let's say you want to pick what what is exposed so your host ports and your container ports um, if you want to come in here you can put in your you know all these different commands you can put in your volumes you can add them map them to different locations your networking your environment labels restart policy right I always put unless stopped I mean you can do the whole process right here capabilities and and set up an entire container and all the configuration and options right here and then once you have all that how you want it you can click over here and hit deploy and deploy the container that way so you can basically edit a run command, which you guys have seen, and take something like this, and you can actually do this entire process inside a portainer, right? Here's your restart policy. So that command, right? Now you want to add a variable? You want that guy in there? All right, go to variable and add it, right? So you'd copy it. You'd come down here, volumes, right? Paste. Okay, so you, you, could, you could do all this. this. All this stuff is very functional and you can add that in there and get it in there and do some cool stuff with it, right? Map it to different things, whatever whatever you wanna do. So all those options are right here and you can do all that configuration right here very easily. Hit deploy and deploy your container that way as well. So lots to do here in Portainer. Hope you guys have learned quite a bit about it um, and some of the things I'm showing you are helpful. There's so much more to go on, on here and in, in what you can do in Portainer, but I'm just trying to give you enough to get your feet in and get your feet wet and get you like trying things out. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I'm going to wrap it up here, but we'll catch you in the next one. Root Junkie, out.